Dear learners and listeners, welcome to NIOS. I am Dr. Shweta and today we are going to talk about planning and conducting programs in play centers. This is lesson number 29B of your self-learning material at of the senior secondary course. So let us begin. As we all know that children below the age of 5 to 6 years are at the most impressionable period of their life. The foundation for future personality is laid during these years only. Whatever is learned at this age gets so deeply embedded that it becomes difficult to change it later on. It is therefore the duty of adults to provide rich experience to the child and help in development of good habits, proper attitudes and a questioning mind. A large majority of the preschools are run on the pattern as the primary school. This is rather unfortunate as the needs of these young children are very different and an entirely different approach is necessary particularly if we want to stimulate their optimum development. So in this program you will get to know about the program planning that is to be done in the play center and particularly for this age group and the playway education in a play center. So first of all you must know that what are the objectives of the today's program. So by the end of today's program you would be able to explain the program planning, how it is done. You would also be able to state the principles that are involved in program planning and describe the short term and the long term planning. Also, you would be able to develop programs for different age groups that is below 3 years and 3 to 5 years that is different age groups. And at the end of it, you would also be able to explain the various steps that are involved in organizing the feeding program for the little children in place centers. So let us begin with the first objectives which is program planning, how it is done and what are the concepts and principles that are involved while planning the programs in the play centers for different age groups. For play center, program planning is very important to reach the desired goal. It involves chalking out programs for a play center, collecting things that are required and executing the planned programs. There are certain principles to be considered while planning programs for children under 5 years of age. So when we talk about planning programs, the first is that it is very important that you consider the need of the children. Let us know that when we are considering the need of the children, what is there in it? First of all, it is very important that while considering the need of the children, the activities should be planned which are appropriate to the age of the children. Why? Because a little child is ready for certain activities only at a particular age. If these activities are introduced to the child before the child is ready for them, it will become really difficult for the child to master those skills. The second is that uh, how to introduce the activity at an appropriate time. When the child is ready for an activity, introduce it so that the child enjoys doing it and masters the skill. For example, for the new entrants, that is the newcomers in the play centers, ball play should be arranged before offering organized games. Then comes that the next point which is important while considering the needs of the children is that the program should be flexible to serve the needs of the children. What is it? It is that the length and nature of the activities should depend on the interest of the children. Sometimes what happens that some children may get engrossed in an activity for a long period of time. So in such instances, it becomes the duty of the teacher that uh, how to plan the activity and uh, to uh, provide opportunity to the children so that they continue to work for a longer time because these little children have a short attention span. So uh, how to develop uh, those flexible activities is very important. Then is that the program planned should be meaningful and help the children to learn habits, concepts and value. For instance, music and stories help children in their language development. So whatever you are trying to teach uh, the little children, you should teach in a playway manner, for example through stories or music. 
informal talks on certain animals themes help children to acquire information on animals each activity planned for children should have meaning and it should be related to the community life the program should also provide first hand concrete experiences so first hand concrete experiences are what you cannot just tell the uh, children what to do but they should also experience what is being taught for example digging preparing the soil sowing seeds and watering are the first hand experiences so sh children should be given this opportunity under the supervision of the teacher to experience such activity in order to have a better understanding of it it is very important to associate the old experiences with the new ones for instance blocks of assorted shapes may be given and the children be asked to find out objects of similar shapes in the immediate environment the next important point is that the children should be allowed time for rest and sleep they require time for rest and sleep in a play center and at least an hour and a half should be allowed for rest and sleep now the second comes that the program should have a variety we discussed that we should consider the needs of the children when we are planning uh, the a uh, programs the needs involved that they need uh, rest time it should be flexible and uh, other things that we discussed now that when you are planning the program what variety should a program have let us discuss about it so the activities can be of different kinds the program for children should include songs stories dramatization activities for cognitive development and creative activities organized games science experiences uh, field trips and cultural programs should be there in the uh, variety of programs that you are planning for the little children in the play center the program should also include both the individual as well as group activities why it is important because the physical and motor activities planned in the program should have individual acts like drawing painting creative play etc and also group play like follow the leader find the treasure etc it is very important to maintain a balance between free play and guided activity the children in the play center should be allowed certain amount of time to enjoy play on their own without any interference why it is important it is important because it gives the opportunity to explore investigate and find out different possibilities of using play material the teacher initiated or guided play must also find a place in the program as they promote specific concepts in the children the program should alternate between active play and quiet play because too much physical activity exhausts the children hence it is necessary to provide some restful activity after a spell of active work children will also enjoy an active game or play after sedentary work or play so dear learners this was all about why it is important to consider the needs of the children while planning activities in the play center and also about that what variety should a uh, program in the play center must have uh now let us also talk about that what do we mean by overall planning uh, of programs and conducting a play center so when we talk about the overall planning the first and foremost uh, thing is the program should be planned according to certain specific themes now what can be the different themes the different themes can be decided on the basis of the event in a particular week or the month for example in the second and third week of january pongal can be a theme for the project as the celebration falls during this month it can be anything else it can be janmashtami it can be holi or other themes so that it becomes easier for the little children also to understand the concepts of various festivals it is also important to consider the facilities that are available in the play center success of a play center would depend upon the facilities that are there hence for children one must take into account availability of the facilities such as the shady area in the outdoor indoor space equipments and the caretakers that are there to uh, take care of the little children while doing overall planning it is necessary to plan the program in advance and make necessary arrangements planning the program in advance facilitates collection of materials for activities and execution and evaluation of activities without any difficulty or 
confusion. For instance, planning uh, for a film show or field trip in advance makes it possible for the teacher to organize it successfully. So dear learners, as of now we have discussed about the program planning in the play centers and the important points that are to be kept in mind while planning the program. Apart from this, there are long term and short term planning uh, which is done for the smooth conduct of activities throughout the year in a play center. Let us know about these uh, long term and short term planning and how they are done. So it is, uh, there are two types of planning, one is done uh, which is uh, uh, known as the long term planning and next is the second is called the short term planning which is uh, based on the day to day basis. Let us know that what is the difference between long term and short term planning and what do we in include in long term and short term planning. So first of all we will talk about the long term planning. As the name suggests it is the planning of the program for a whole year in advance. Long term plans systematize the programs considerably. It relates to planning for learning experiences of children, keeping in mind their developmental needs, uh, the children teaching aids, materials and play equipments, organizing finance, fixing with resource persons, etc. Long term planning helps to have new equipments purchased, old items uh, repaired or replaced. So this is what comes in the long term planning. Short term planning. For effective functioning, it is necessary that the program for the whole year be divided into smaller units, say a month or a week or a day to day basis. There are certain experiences to be offered during special occasions. Month wise planning enables the teacher to include special events and programs. It also aids in making the program flexible and need based. Weekly planning helps in including variety and taking care that all developmental needs are taken care of. Day wise planning is necessary to set a time schedule. One knows clearly as to what is to be done now and during next half an hour and the following half an hour. Short term planning also includes the daily program. Let us know that what is there in the daily programs. There is a chart which I have uh, provided here which would give you an idea that how do we conduct the daily programs under the short term planning in this uh, in the play centers. So these are certain activities that uh, uh, would enable you to understand that how do we conduct the daily programs starting from 9 o'clock to 9.30 what is the arrival time of the student uh, of the students or the kids in the play center. What do they do after they come inside the play center for example once they arrive so uh, they are given free play time and after that there is a prayer time and after the prayer time uh, they, there is an exercise session or whatever. So likewise we have divided uh, for the half days program that how the planning on a daily basis be conducted in the play centers. Apart from the daily programs there are weekly programs also. So what are the weekly programs? Uh, so let us know what are the weekly programs. The themes for the week need to be decided and planned ahead. The day's activities must take into account the individual and group needs of the children. For example, if the theme for the week is class, so uh, how are you going to tell about uh, the kinds of flowers, the colors of flower to the children? So this is how it is done. When the students arise, uh, after arrival what happens? When they have an assembly time that is a prayer time then once the prayer is over then when you are doing informal talks with the kids then while doing the informal talks the kinds of flowers uh, are told to the little children. The uh, different colors of the flowers are also uh, told to the children so this is how it will go on. You can have a weekly plan uh, or uh, on the basis of different themes. For example, for one week the theme is flowers, for the another week the theme can be winter, for any other field the theme can be summers or fruits or anything which uh, you have already planned uh, for the entire year. So there are number of uh, activities that are given in the chart and that would uh, make it easier for you to understand that when we are doing the uh, weekly planning based on the themes for a particular age group say for 4 to 5 years. So how do we do it as per the time schedule in the play center? Everything is given. 
the rest and sleep time is also given the waking up time uh, and the evening uh, snacks time is also given when it is to be done what is to be provided when is the time for outdoor play when is the time for indoor play so dear learners this was all about that how the planning is done in the play center in which we talked about the long term planning which is done for the entire year and we also uh, talked about the short term planning which is based on the daily basis or the weekly basis now it is also important that when we have a play center how do we organize the feeding program let us understand that when we are organizing the feeding program what is to be kept in mind good nutrition is the foundation stone of good development the play center program must allow for a snack time in its schedule along with provisions of food during the same the aim of this feeding program is basically to provide young children with an adequate meal which will meet at least one third of the daily requirements of all the nutrients what children bring from home may or may not be adequate eating in school together with other children also provides an opportunity for children to learn manners appreciate cleanliness and practice independence in eating on their own besides this it also gives them a habit to eat whatever is served and which is not a fuss let us now consider the factors to be kept in mind while organizing the feeding program can you think of some factors you can take a piece of paper and note them down and please ensure the following which we are going to discuss here whenever you are planning or whenever you are organizing the feeding program certain steps are there which are to be kept in mind so first of all the body size and age of the children who are to be fed is very important to be kept in mind second is that availability and cost of food so if the food is available that you want to provide to the uh, children or not that is to be kept in mind what are the food customs and traditions of the families from where the children are coming from and also the availability of the labor and supervisory services to provide food to the uh, little children and to assist them in eating and uh giving them food the actual organization and conducting of a feeding program involves different steps first is secure financial assistance so what is secure financial assistance or how do you secure financial assistance can you think of anyone who would give money regularly for this yes there are various options you can charge parents if you know they can afford it you can ask community to donate in cash help can also be sought from government organizations for uh, the financial assistance the next is that it is very important to ensure that there is a provision of space for kitchen and food services as discussed earlier this place needs to be very clean and ventilated there should be ample space for cooking storing and procuring the food the next is procuring the kitchen items this will be required for cooking storing and processing the food the next part which comes in this uh, organizing the uh, food is the menu planning and estimate quantity there are different uh, points that are to be kept in mind when you are planning the menu for the little kids so first is the nutritional adequacy it is very important that whatever uh, is pl uh, planned in the menu to be provided to the uh, little children it should have all the nutrients that are important for the healthy development of the little children it is also important to use the seasonally available food also the minimum expenditure of time and labor should be required in cooking and serving the food so the food should be planned accordingly or the menu should be planned accordingly which would require the minimum effort on the part of the assistant who is serving the food to the little children it is also important that uh, when you are preparing a menu varied and interesting items based on family's food patterns should be provided to the little children and attractiveness is very important for the little children because unless the little kids find the food interesting or attractive they would not show an interest to eat the food and apart from attractive food it is very important that it should have the appetizing qualities uh, for the little children minimum loss of nutrients should be uh, there while cooking the food that is it should not be overcooked 
so, and if you are overcooking the food all the nutrients will get lost. So it is very important that there should be minimum loss of nutrients while cooking the food. So this was all about that how do you organize nutrition for the little children. But there are certain steps also that are involved in planning the menu for the feeding program and these steps are very important. Let us understand about these steps. First of all tell me do you remember about the nutritional requirements of the children between 0 to 6 years of age? ICMR which is Indian Council for Medical Research has provided the RDA which is uh, the recommended daily allowances for the uh, children between 0 to 6 years. That is what amount of food is required uh, for these children. First of all it is important to uh, calculate the food requirement. So how do we calculate the food requirement? From the food allowances recommended by the ICMR for children below 6 years one third of the daily requirements per child is computed and by multiplying this by total number of children the total amount to be cooked for the children of the play center is arrived at. So this is how the calculation is done for the food requirement for all the kids in the play center. Second is selection of food to supply the nutritional requirements. So to select the food which will provide the nutrients is needed giving priority to local, low cost and nutritious seasonal food. The next step is to select a menu of the food products that are of children's taste and are simple to prepare. This will ensure that children will eat. Once the menu is settled, it is important to estimate the quantities of food to be cooked taking into account the number of children to be fed. You know how it is done that we have already discussed in the first point. Great care must be exercised in the uh, estimation of quantities, selection, purchasing and storage of ingredients that are required and this comes under procurement and storage of provision. The estimated quantities of the ingredients are classified as those which would be purchased monthly, fortnightly, weekly and daily depending upon their storability and the containers that are available for storing. This is also important for the simple reason that some foods are perishable and others are not. Training of the cook is very important. The training must be in terms of the cooking procedures, applied hygienic methods used for food preparation and serving. Can you say why these are important? Because young children are very vulnerable to food infections and one must be protected from these at all costs. Moreover, the product prepared must have adequate nutrition. The next is that maintenance of cleanliness in the lunch area should be uh, there. Proper care must be taken to ensure the hygienic condition of the kitchen, lunch area, wash place and utensils for cooking and serving. The next is that conducting nutrition education activities. Why it is important? Any feeding program must include nutrition education in order to make it effective. Feeding program in a play center not only facilitates adequate amount of uh, food intake by the children but also helps the children to learn about food, nutrients and their uh, relation to health along with environmental sensations. Nutrition education is essential for combating malnutrition. Nutrition education is concerned with persuading children and parents to modify their food practices in order to improve their health and nutritional status by wiser use of the available food resources. So dear learners, this was all about planning and conducting programs in the play center in which we talked about that when we are planning uh, and conducting the programs in the play center, what is to be kept in mind? First of all, how do we consider the needs of the children? Uh, accordingly, there are certain principles and concepts that are to be kept in mind and uh, under those principles and concepts, first is that how do you consider the needs of the children? Second is that when you are planning uh, certain activities for the play group, what is important is that what varieties are there in the uh, place that you are uh, planning for the little kids. Then we also talked about the nutritional requirement, how it is to be done. We also talked about that there are certain plannings that are done for the whole year and they are known as long term planning and there are certain planning that is uh, done uh, on a weekly or daily basis and that is known as short term planning. At the end of the program we discussed that how to organize uh, the nutritional uh, uh, program for the uh, little children in the play center 
what is to be kept in mind, why it is important and what are the various steps that are involved in preparing the menu for the little kids, why it is important, why training the cook is important, why cleanliness of the area is required, uh, important, what is recommended by ICMR uh, regarding the nutritional requirements of the little kids. So, I hope that you could understand that what is uh, to be done when we are planning and conducting programs in the play center. With this, I end up uh, for today's topic. I hope that you could understand the topic well. Thank you.